Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here. Once again, I'm doing another movie review, and it's a film that came out just 31 years ago, since July 20th of 1984. It's basically a film that's what it is, a modern day fairy tale for computers, electronics, and technology that we had for its time and it could still be relevant today if you think about it despite it being this dated yes I'm talking about the film Electric Dreams it's a story about a boy who's an architect a girl who's a celloist and a computer who has a mind of its own and can control everything this movie was considered to be criminally underrated as we speak because this movie hasn't given an official US release on DVD and Blu-ray as of now and already we just had a movie that's similar to this called Her which has Joaquin Phoenix as well as Amy Adams, Rooney Mara and Scarlett Johansson of the voice communicator named Samantha. This one was like way back and it was exactly how technology was back then as it is now. But this one's a film that really got got me when I first saw it. You know, I, I really enjoy the energy, the visuals, the technique. And, and all the feelings that they had in this film that I would watch this anytime. In fact, I, I would probably watch this more than once, actually. But sad to say, this movie has been hard to find anywhere. And the last time it did got released, um, it was on VHS uh, back in the 90s yeah, by MGM, United Artists Home Video. They also released the Laserdisc version as well. So that's so that's no wonder why we never got one because I think the, the production company that released this, yeah, Virgin Films, which is a sub diary of Virgin Records, uh, never uh, had a chance to uh, own the rights to this movie. And I know MGM did own the rights overseas since they did release the film in 1984 and I guess maybe it's because of uh, music copyrights yeah another example and this movie just never gets um, the attention it deserves sad I know because this movie had a lot of beautiful music because there was a lot of 80's uh, artists that we had um, I you know, you couldn't forget, they had a lot of synthesizers that they put in, lots of visuals, all the imaginative animation that they put into it. That's like a fantasy. It has that feel to it. I really enjoy that. A lot of great romance and very good chemistry between um, Lenny Bondolan's character, Miles, and Virginia Matson as Madeline. I thought they were great together. In my opinion, yeah, I, I know Lanny Bondolan went on to do Home Alone Free, and Virginia Madsen went on to do films like Candyman and and The Prophecy and, and all the rest that she's been in in, in her entire career. She's very beautiful today too. If you think about it, but yeah, uh, I mean this was a fun small film. It was directed by uh, Steve Barron, who actually started directing and producing all these music videos that aired on MTV you know, with Michael Jackson, you know, David Bowie, Madonna, you name it. Even Aha. I, I remember because he was famous for that video called the Take On Me. I remember that video and I'm surprised it's the same guy. He later went on to do Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from 1990. The live action film before we had that crappy one you know, with Michael Bay producing and and Jonathan Libersman you know, directing 
But he also did uh, Coneheads with Dan Aykroyd and Jane Curtin, and yeah, which is based on the popular 70s uh, Saturday Night Live sketch and The Adventures of, of Pinocchio, yeah, which had Jonathan Taylor Thomas and Martin Landau. I love that one too. But yeah, I'm, so this was a very small film. I hope someday, I don't know, because we've been waiting 30 years now. I pray that either Warner Brothers or any other company would release this film on DVD and Blu-ray for the very first time in the U.S. Because this movie deserves credit, you know. But all the movies that we're getting nowadays, why not Electric Dreams? Exactly. So let's get right to it. It stars Lenny Bondolin from Home Alone 3, Virginia Madsen from Candyman and the Prophecy, Maxwell Caulfield from Grease 2 and later Empire Records, Bud Court from Harold and Maude, Don Fellows, Winnie Miller, Maria Magolius, you know, who went on to do other films including Ed and His Dead Mother and, <laughs> and most recently uh, Maya the Bee, the movie. Sorry, the movie is written by Rusty Lemerad. The movie is directed by Steve Barron. The movie begins when a young, down-on-his-luck architect named Miles Harding, who basically spends his entire life being unorganized, especially after that business trip that he took um, during a couple weeks or so, and he came back already late for work, and already getting everything set up for his architecture. Unfortunately, the best idea for all of this was to actually advise a friend to go to a computer store to buy an electronic day planner. But since they were all out, he decided to purchase a computer filled with a lot of equipment that he needs, already being built and set up. Yeah, he wants up actually using some security locks um, from his door so it can move automatically and gets everything all connected between all of his electronics devices that he has including his stereo system, um, his microwave, his coffee maker, all the works that he has while getting the entire computer and all the equipment set up together. He then meets a girl next door that just moved in who happens to be very beautiful and she's also a celloist named Madeline Robinstadt. And since then, he became very clumsy at times, which he usually is. He wants up bumping into uh, Madeline everywhere he goes, uh, including the, the supermarket, you know, where they're about to get all these groceries. He then later had some dinner and everything. We soon begin to find out that Madeline has been hearing a lot of background noises coming from the walls of his apartment, which actually came from the air conditioner chute. He begins to hear some random noises and music and all this other stuff that comes into it. So, he, so that's where he begins to find out, you know, Miles's dark secret. Until later on in the film. Well, anyway, already Miles is already fixing the entire computer, having everything set up. You know, trying to get all the information he needs. Yeah, you know, he's already you know working at his architectural plans that he does, including everything about earthquakes and you know safety issues and even trying to come up with a new building that's being set up yeah I like the scene where he was actually using a puzzle where he can actually uh, use an electronic pen to actually draw a third dimensional puzzle that's on screen looks really beautiful until the next night he started to uh, get all the information that he needs from his boss's computer yeah, where he had to transfer all the information from his computer and t until all of a sudden the system overloads. Yeah, he was trying to get all the passwords and everything from a fairy tale. He grabs a bottle of champagne, which, which after the computer was overloading, was filled with information, causing the computer to almost get damaged. He accidentally spilled you know, champagne all over the entire keyboard into the computer chips. So then all of a sudden it creates an entire um, computer that has a mind of its own 
and it now reveals uh, a person that's inside a computer named Igor, who's played by and voiced by, of course, Bud Quartz. So since then, you know, things are going completely strange as possible when suddenly Madeline wants up hearing background music while playing with her cello. And it's and he thought that Miles actually had done all of this since he probably has enough talent to actually you know be able to create all the music Madeline would need. I mean she couldn't believe that she started hearing a lot of synthesizers that's being played by the computer, so she never knew about that. That which that scene alone was like a music video. Um, I gotta say, man, Baron sure had come up with something this unique. But then, you know, once again, they bump into each other in the supermarket, you know, trying to communicate about what was going on inside the apartment and how he was becoming more talented and, and everything that, uh, that Miles just talks about, that he's an architect. He creates a lot of, you know, all the information he needs for the buildings that he's creating, you know, so he can give it to the boss. And so Madeline was just talking about, you know, how he created the music and everything, so... So on and so forth. He also offered Miles to to join a, a concert for the opening night since she was already practicing a cello. And yep, he came by and already with uh, Madeline's boyfriend Bill, Miles went inside opening night where you actually hear the background music that's coming from his pager, which he tries to shut it off, but Igor the computer wants up controlling it. And it just starts to play in the background, just like what, what she just heard in this apartment. So it starts playing, and then the whole entire audience were, was looking at him, embarrassingly, as it seems. He wants up getting out of, out of his seat and tries to go straight into the bathroom and dumps the, the pager inside the toilet, yeah, where you get to see <laughs> the computer screen actually showing all these water drips you know, going down as it flushes. Yeah, that, that was a funny moment right there, there, like, yeah. Uh, all this time, Miles is just basically spending time with Madeline, you know, going out with each other, you know, going for dinner, you know, watching a drive-in movie, um, and going to a lot of carnivals and all this other stuff, even the Alcatraz site that they went to, you know, all empty inside, they're just using it as a brief tour. Yeah, that, that was cool. Uh, a lot of great moments right there. That's so romantic and beautiful and touching. Yeah. So anyway, I Igor the computer wants up uh, beginning to contact Miles. And since then they've been trying to uh, communicate with each other to see, you know, what was it like and, and, and everything. We now begin to find out that, you know, he now falls in love with Madeline as well. So he wants to create some music and all this other stuff including the love song and which he did create it by even using all these lyrics that that Miles actually told Igor to do about what what love is but he also started but not only that Igor actually started watching a, a lot of you know TV commercials movies and all that just to find the perfect note for <laughs> for that music that he just come up with and yeah <laughs> and of course Madeline already you know you know, bumping into uh, to Miles, you know, he began to find out his exactly dark secret behind all this. Yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, it's su such a great computer. So yeah, but things started to get really worse was when, since Igor couldn't be able to meet Madeline at all, because, you know, he feels very jealous and disappointing, he wanted to uh, Miles to actually be able to talk to her, you know, touch her and meet her for, for his own. And then Miles, of course, just tells him, no, you can't do that because you're a computer. It just gets worse because he wants up controlling his entire life in a very dangerous way. He starts to uh, destroy his entire record, all the credit cards that he has, the checks, everything, all done from the computers alone. Yeah, his life was becoming a nightmare, a huge nightmare. So the only way to actually uh, stop it is to destroy the computer, and and he tried to do that, but but it wasn't uh, hard enough. 
Because then when Madeline finally came along and begins to find out his actual dark secret, where he starts seeing portraits of of a drawing of her under the architectural stuff, she then actually discovered the computer that's already been messed up a little ways. And then Igor started playing the music. That was the scene where uh, where Madeline actually uh, starts crying in tears because uh, you know even after the scene where you know she just lost her cello after being crushed by an elevator and all of this I mean it's just one of those sad touching moments in, in music which that leads to another sad moment because after that you know he also self destruct completely after you know talking to Miles about what happened and he, and he discovers the truth behind all of this. And yeah, that, and yeah after, you know, Miles already trying to look for Madeline, he, he talked, he actually reveals the truth that he was lying to her about all of this. And, and he started to fall in love with Madeline and they were together. You know, well, Igor already, already feeling the heartbroken, just to self-destruct completely. And now he's becoming, as we speak, a DJ, a radio DJ, you know, while both Miles and Madeline decide to go out um, for two weeks, you know, just spending time with each other. And then the movie pretty much ends with what seems more like a music video as Igor actually controls the radio and started playing some wonderful music. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, this was just uh, a very beautiful, touching love story done with computers, electronics, and everything that's done with, and I just love this movie so much, and I'm just, it's just such a shame, this movie never gets credit it deserves, this film is just as beautiful as it can get, it doesn't matter how dated this movie was, I mean, considering it was made in the 80s, this could be done today, we already had one already called Her, which had the idea, but, but it was a whole different story. This one works, and it really does. Um, I love the chemistry between you know, Lenny Bondolan and Virginia Madsen playing Miles and Madeline. I thought they were great together. I mean, despite the fact that Miles is just, you know, as we speak, a boring guy, you know, down on his luck, you know, having to deal with architecture more than than having to deal with you know, girlfriends in his entire particular life. And Madeline, you know, as beautiful as she could be, you know, she loves her music, you know, she has that trusty cello as a best friend that she had since she was 12 years old. So even though she did have a lot of boyfriends, including Bill, but none of them were actually musicians at, at all. And that's, yeah, she spoke the truth behind that. So that's why, you know, she started falling in love with Miles because the music in the background that's coming from the computer was part of his talents but she didn't know that it was a computer she thought that he created it of his own so yes even though he does a lot of architecture so he doesn't know anything about all this stuff so that's funny but Igor of course was the star of the film I mean the computer was just amazing I mean he could do anything I mean he's the voice communicator of its own he control his entire life as we speak I mean I mean, I guess you could say he is sort of like the HAL 9000 or simply, you know, the Johnny 5 uh, of all computers out there. I mean, yeah, I mean, sort of both. I mean, I know Short Circuit came out two years after this movie did, but you get the idea. I mean, this is an earlier version of him. But this is the kind of computer you really wish you would have. I mean, for, for its time, though. Because you can actually come up with something like this. I mean, you, you can actually set up a computer that has a voice communicator that can tell you what to do and how to control everything in your life, no matter what happens. But one of the funny moments in the film was when Igor started to uh, <laughs> started to play loud music uh, in the background of his apartment while, you know, while Miles and, and Madeline were just hiding inside her apartment, you know, is trying to figure it out if if Igor is actually controlling all this. So he wants to pretend like like uh, Miles and Madeline had left. 
but he's pretty much doing everything that he does yeah on, on screen <laughs> oh wow and I know that was a scene where yeah you know, he was playing loud music in the background and well the the next door neighbor was was complaining you know an elderly couple was just was telling them to shut off the music at his apartment he has his husband going in just opening the door to see what's going on and the music stops and then when he came back in <laughs> you know the wife says that's telling him Howard and, and then Igor actually mocks her and he just continue playing music anyway <laughs> until it stops it was just funny oh man I'm, I mean Igor you know <laughs> Igor's a riot I love that computer he, he, he's just hilarious and and it's just sad that this had to happen to him even though he was insanely jealous and and feeling very confused and all that that you know not to mention he's totally obsessed with Madeline because of the music yeah you couldn't blame him for that I mean, who wouldn't want to love Madeline trust me <laughs> who wouldn't I mean she's she's so beautiful very talented at what she does and you just want to have a neighbor like her and I don't blame him yeah I mean but like I said th this is a definitely a unique uh, love story that they had I, I love the scene also when when they actually had an Alice in Wonderland type of story where you saw all the, the earlier days of computer animation while well, they actually had uh, all the music that's being played in but it was a moment where you saw an animated version of, of I believe it might be uh, Miles or Igor of some sort who was inside a dream he was in a town where all of a sudden it was a huge earthquake and all the buildings and lands that he was standing on were collapsing right between his entire eyes and then he fell in and then all of a sudden it shows a lot of beautiful visuals where he discovers the girl of his dreams it was done completely with earlier computer animation and it was composed by Giorgio Monomer and it also had some beautiful music with a lot of artists such as Culture Club and an electric light orchestra you know, Jeff Lynne's band yeah everything it, it was just what it is a music video shot on film yeah and that's just how beautiful this movie was it was hilarious funny you know, touching unique uh, I mean you, you would just watch this film over and over even if you haven't seen this but I was just amazed how how beautifully done it was yeah so with that aside if you haven't seen a beautiful film like Electric Dreams this is definitely for you okay try to find a copy somewhere around like at thrift stores you know online like amazon.com or anything or ebay or maybe try to see if you could find like a very rare dvd that's released overseas yeah i know they have one from australia and i think in the uk as well because that's where they released it at i mean you probably have to get yourself a region free DVD player in order to watch this film but if you have like an old laserdisc player or a VCR then I think you'll get a chance to find a copy it's not really easier to find but I'll, I'll give you this though there is an HD print of the film which I did found I was lucky enough to make a copy of it that was done exactly right it was actually taken directly from MGM HD channel in the UK I think they played this in the US as well I'm not so sure but that's exactly how they aired the film and it looks so beautiful it has a much better transfer than ever before I never thought I would see this film in this particular format but it was great to see it in widescreen the way it was meant to be and you, know, you just have fun with it so yes I definitely recommend Electric Dreams and I give this film five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.